Today, we discuss the return of the Web of Fear, and discuss what happened to Web of Fear 3, discuss Victoria's departure in Fury from the Deep, and meet Zoe in the Wheel in Space. The 22nd missing serial is the Web of Fear. The Doctor encounters the Great Intelligence and the terrifying Yeti once again. This time, it is in the London Underground. The Doctor must align with armed forces in order to contain the unearthly threat. Episode 3 is the only missing episode. So, what does exist? Graham Strong's audio recordings are considered the highest quality. Landon and Holman also recorded this story. All telesteps exist, along with the sensor clips from episodes 2, 4, and 5, which are now considered not missing. Four prints of the Web of Fear were made. Australia returned theirs to the BBC. Zambia doesn't own any BBC material. New Zealand junked their copy, but still had sensor clips from it. In 2011, Philip Morris found all six parts of the Web of Fear. That's right all six. He gained permission to return the episodes to the BBC, but just before shipment, episode three went missing. Philip Morris believes that it was sold in a private sale. Sadly, as of this date, episode three has not been recovered. This is also why there was a big gap between finding the episodes and announcing them to the public, due to Philip believing he could gain access to the third episode. For this story, the Yeti costumes were remade from scratch. This was due to the production team now deeming the original design not to be terrifying enough. The general concept is still there, just slightly streamlined. They now have glowing eyes, new claws, and a refined silhouette. They also gained a raw sound effect, which was lacking in the bottomless snowman. Extensive location filming was considered for the Web of Fear at London's Natural History Museum and in the London Underground. Both didn't pan out for reasons of cost or straight up refusal. The Underground was faithfully recreated in studio, so much so that they received complaints from London Transport who thought they filmed there anyway without permission. Deborah Watling also expressed her interest in departing the series during the production of this serial. So, what are the ways of viewing the Web of Fear today? The Web of Fear episode 3 has not been officially animated by the BBC. The surviving episodes were released on the Web of Fear DVD in 2014. The loose canon Web of Fear reconstruction was completed in late 2011, the same time Philip Morris found the surviving episodes. It was LC35. The audio reading was completed in 2000 by Fraser Hines. It was re-released in 2003 and 2012. The novel was released in 1976. Let's talk recovery. In 1977, 206 episodes from the first six years of Doctor Who were missing from the archive. Sue Malden was appointed as archive selector at the Film and Videotape Library, and she chose Doctor Who as her project. Once she saw the state of the archive, she worked to find anything of Doctor Who that she could. She found a whole bunch of videotape master copies, and managed to find every Pertwee episode. Not all of them in colour though. Ian Levine found 79 episodes in the Villiers House archive in London, allegedly before they were set to be junked. Sue also contacted the BFI and gained access to a few episodes from there. Further discoveries were also made this year, making the original missing episode count of 206 to 136. Since then, we have lowered that number to 97. 44 Hartnell episodes and 53 Troughton episodes are missing from the archive. Our 23rd missing serial is Fury from the Deep. The Doctor and friends encounter a refinery base. A curious sound is heard in the pipes. Inside, what may appear to be ordinary seaweed contains a deadly secret, one that could destroy everyone in the base. Sadly, all episodes of this serial are missing. So, what does exist? Graham Strong's audio recordings are considered the highest quality. Holman and Landon also recorded this story. 19 seconds from episode 1 exist, due to it being reused in the war games. Sensor clips from episodes 2, 4, and 5 also exist. In 2003, 3 minutes and 32 seconds of film trims were discovered, but the footage contains unused takes, but are a good indication of what it could have looked like. Tony Cornell, who recorded The Last Dalek during Evil of the Daleks, also shot some silent 8mm footage, which goes for roughly 4 minutes. All telesnaps exist from this serial. Four prints of Fury from the Deep were created. Australia and New Zealand junked theirs, 
although New Zealand kept their sensor clips. Gibraltar's copy was most likely returned after broadcast. During the serial, Peter Bryant took over the role of producer, and Derek Sherwin became story editor. This serial also debuts the sonic screwdriver. In the original script, it was just an ordinary screwdriver. But Michael Bryant, a production assistant, suggested the idea of the sonic screwdriver. This was the final episode for Deborah Watling, who made her exit at the end of episode 6. So, how can you view Fury from the Deep today? As of this video, Fury from the Deep has not been animated. The surviving clips are available on the Lost in Time DVD box set. Loose Cannon has reconstructed Fury from the Deep as LC-22. The original audio narration by Tom Baker was released in 1993, and in 2004 a remastered version by Fraser Hines was made. The novel was released in 1986. Our 24th missing serial is The Wheel in Space. The Doctor and Jamie contact a space station known as The Wheel. Little do they know, the Cybermen are watching and intend to use The Wheel as a beacon for their invasion fleet. Sadly, only episodes 3 and 6 survive of this serial. So, what does exist? Graham Strong has the highest quality audio recording, and Holman and Landon also recorded this serial. Episode 3 exists as a 16mm print, and Episode 6 exists as a 35mm print. Sensor clips from Episode 4 exist from the Australian archives, whereas the sensor clips from Episode 5 come from New Zealand. The latter were discovered in 2002, which was held in private hands. All telesumps exist from this serial. Four prints of the Wheel in Space were made, Australia and New Zealand junk theirs, Nigeria's fate is unknown, and Gibraltar probably returned it to the BBC after broadcast. The original concept for the Wheel in Space was quite different to the end result. Originally, the concept of this story was to have a Cyberman vs Dalek serial, but the idea was vetoed by Terry Nation, who had the first right of refusal for any Dalek script idea. This serial introduced Wendy Padbury into the role of Zoe Harriet, the latest travelling friend of the Doctor. During the recording of Episode 3, the sound box that was used to record the Cyberman lines broke down, which means they had to remount the cliffhanger sequence the week later. How can you experience The Wheel in Space today? The Wheel in Space Episode 1 has been animated officially by the BBC as a special feature for the Missing Believes Wipe event. It is believed this is to be a special feature for the Macro Terror release, but as of this video being created, it has not been confirmed yet. The surviving episodes were released in the Lost in Time box set. An official reconstruction was released by BritBox, but received mixed reviews due to its lack of CGI compared to the loose cannon reconstruction. Praise was given to the high quality telesnaps and remastered audio. Wheel in Space was reconstructed by Loose Cannon in 2011 under LC34. An audio release, narrated Narrated by Wendy Padbury, was released in May 2004. The novelization was released in 1988. So, which one of these stories would you like to see return to the archive most? Watch as the Cybermen come out of the London sewers in the invasion, shiver some space timbers in the Space Pirates, and contemplate the future of Doctor Who's missing serials. Follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my channel for more Doctor Who content.